Waller School is a two-form entry primary in East London. For the last seven years, it has achieved above national average in literacy, numeracy and science. Many of the strategies adopted by the school are now being highlighted in definitions of personalised learning. One of the things that has made our school work is that we've tried to use the best of what we've got and a lot of that is, reflects on the teachers that we have. What did we do on the board? We've got a school yes, full of teachers who are very able. What we needed to do point? was work together as that able team but allow for the individuality within it as well. There needs to be lots of room for autonomy, lots of room for people to make their decisions because they know how they work best as they get the knowledge around their children, they know how they work best. And that relationship works best when people feel empowered to take charge of what they, what they do. The school fosters teacher autonomy, but this autonomy exists within a clearly defined, agreed framework. We're all responsible for our own individual areas of work within the wider situation. So the fairest thing to do was to have an understanding about where we wanted children to be all the way through school, not just at year two and year six when they were being externally assessed, but at each stage in between. The school aims for every child to progress by two thirds of a national curriculum level each year. At the end of the summer term, teachers assess the children's progress so that at the beginning of the new year, a teacher can see where children in a class are, relative to each other and relative to a benchmark for that year. Carmen has moved from three A's and three C's, three A in reading, three C in writing, three A in maths at the end of year four, to four C, four C, four C. So she's moved into year six at exactly the point we would hope everybody would, just slightly above, if anything. All, right? all the children above Carmen did better than we would you know, set our target for. The other side of that coin is all these children below her made less than what we were looking for. Obviously, we need to say, why didn't they make average progress in that year? And for some, there'll be very clear reasons. For others, it's a really big and important question and rings alarm bells. What worries me sometimes is that we can spend lots of time just gathering information. It's the actual work with it that matters. It's the actual looking at it, the understanding about what it means, the trends within it, what it might mean for an individual child that is useful. You know, the actual piece of paper which, with a list of numbers that says where a child might be isn't useful on its own. It's what you do with that that matters. The purpose of the assessment system is to inform teaching throughout the school. He's only there language, yeah. so we don't worry about him. Yeah, she was around about there, but are now moving, 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 moving. Yamin? Yeah. Moving nicely, Hussein. Yeah. You know, all of, that's what I said, all of these children are making better than average progress. I will foresee, and I'm not one of, pre this is not pressure, that red group is going to be seriously shorter at the end of this year, which is what we need to do. We need to try to move children from the red into the orange, orange into the green. The ongoing assessment of the children begins in reception. We work very closely in here as a team. Um, I have a nursery nurse, I have Sophia, I have a teaching assistant, Rushnara. I take on board all their input. The whole reception team is involved in the process of assessment. How many are you going to put in there? Eight. Go on then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, eight. Well done. Well done, Jabia. You got it right. Let's see if you can try more harder numbers. Yeah? Do you know what number? Don't worry if you don't know it. Do you know what number this is? Eleven. Eleven. Good girl. Do you know what number this is? Number ten. ten. Good girl. Well done, Jabia. You've done very well. Let me give you a sticker. I'm so happy with you. You knew all your numbers up to ten. Well done. Two. Good girl. Go on then. Put two for me. Okay. 
Okay, shall we check it if it's right? Shall we check it? Let's see if it's right. How many have you got in there? Please count for me. Give it to my hands. See, count it for me. Do we need any more? How many do we need? Well, she knows how to recognize all the numbers. By counting one to one, that's what she found it quite difficult. So I'm going to fit that back. What, what is the number? How many are you going to put? Two. Good girl. So go and put two. Remember to count. Do you need any more? No. Do you need any more? I don't like Bonnie. Luck tonight. Good girl. Well done. Now let's do the next one. Did you realize when I was telling her, is that the right numbers in English? She said, she said no. But when I said it in Bengali, she went. First I tried telling her in English, is that right? And then when I saw her response, she's saying, she's giving me the wrong answer. I knew she didn't probably understand. Let me try in my language and see what she, does she give me a different answer? And it does. Majority time, she gives the right answer in Bengali. Do you need any more? Good girl, so you got it right. Well done. She only got number two, but does recognise the long. Well, she has just come over to um, I know. Gina, and she's just told Gina, no, you have to do it like this, 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 I this. I know, and that's why I'm surprised. I'm thinking Which it's because very, of the camera. I can't be with every child as they dot every I and cross every T. What they feed to me is invaluable in making decisions about where the children are, where the, ch the children have to be next, which groups they should work in, which um, social groups, which ability groups they should work in. I just really quickly want us to go through where we're up to with assessments and where we're going ahead to for the profiles. I need to see you, Sophia, about um, the ELS assessments. Give me a moment. I just want to look for two minutes at groups. In the light of what you've done there, can I... I just want a little feedback from what they've done in ELS. Just talk me through very briefly. Well, at the beginning when we start ELS, mm -hmm. I test um, some of the children and this is the Mina's um, record. Those are the phonemes. Yeah, yeah? the phoneme yeah, yeah. we yeah. test him. Yeah. And this is only he would know M for mum. End of our ELS, mm -hmm. I test him back I test him, was it? you know, so he was, on he came, fourth, yeah. He, yeah, on the 4th, 15th of 4th, mm -hmm. and he would know 25 phonemes. That's what we love to hear. Yeah. So but he developed... The problem with him developed. now, where we've got to take this on to, is that they are actually sounding out for spelling. So Alongside recorded assessment, the school emphasises the importance of day-to-day -day informal assessment. Yes, I think he needs that helps lesson, to, to... The adults that have worked delivering it, share the information that they've got about the different parts that they've played in that lesson. Because obviously the teacher's not in charge of all the children all the time, teaching assistants or other teachers work with them, and we find that the sharing of that information makes a crucial difference. Jamie, have I seen a picture there? Come and show us. We do a lot of um, observations in the class where we stand back and watch the children. We might not write those all down. I don't think that there's a limit to the amount of paperwork we need to do, but we do observe consistently and continuously, and we feed back to each other. Show everybody the picture and tell us what it's about first. What do you think it's about, Abby? The house is on fire. The house is on fire? And the fire engine's coming. We're going to the fire station. All forms of assessment feed in to build a picture of a child's learning needs. Assessment is integral to teaching. And we're not going to see the fire in And I gave them a birthday cake, my Spider-Man one. One of our aims is to meet the children at their point of need. Working at the station. You'd like to work there, would you? I'm not going to go to the phone station. I'm going to get my, my Spider-Man crystal ben, and my... His point of need now is to put what he, all the bubbling information he has in his head onto paper so it becomes concrete, not just for us but for him himself. Yes, Fahmid. Where the chicken? Then I go on the fire station. You went to the fire you visited the fire station when you were at Rachel Keeley? Yeah. What lucky children you Fahmid. <laughs> Language is his biggest, biggest focus at the moment is actually getting those words out. And you'll see him as he 
pushes himself to try and exp express himself and express his needs. It's lovely to see, actually. I'm, he's a bit of a buzz for me. We looked at a few maps yesterday, didn't we? But today, we're going to go on a walk around Bethnal Green. Now, I want you to come round here. We've been working on map making, very, very cross-curricular work we've been doing. Geography is sequencing for literacy, we're going to be labelling. I'm going to take a very mixed ability group today. We're going to do some follow-up work from our work in the locality yesterday. Fahmid, what did you see yesterday, my boy? Oh, let's sit down. Fire engine. You want to draw a fire engine? OK, go on then. And do you want to draw the fire station? No. No? OK, just draw the fire engine. Yeah, go on then. Draw me a big church. You saw a squirrel in the park. You can draw that on the next page. And the squirrel likes not. A squirrel does like it. Do you want to draw the park and the squirrel first? With the flowers. Go on then, lots of trees. And then the park. We saw loads of his language is so far far outstrips his his um, drawings he doesn't take the time to look and observe closely so a lot of his um, drawings are very immediate that he, he records very quickly and the quicker the better and let me go on to the next thing how do you, uh, draw, it? How do you draw it you right think how to draw some trees you know how to draw trees it's his concentration and focus. Even just a hand or a look or a, a little encouraging word that will keep him on task. Right, that's the tree. Where are the branches with all the blossom and the flowers and all the flowers in the park? Okay, have a look. Did you draw the road underneath the Very clever boy. Shall we write fire engine? Do you think we can? And you can go on top of Miss Clifton's writing. Are you ready? Say it for me. Look at me, look at me. I want you to say fire engine. Fire engine. He doesn't know all the vocabulary and he has to be prompted a lot and also prompted to repeat. I do a lot of rep repeat after me. I see the word. Are you ready to, I are you ready to I colour now? I didn't see a squirrel. I, I, I know. I no, see, well, you weren't I looking with your beady eyes. It's brown. You saw a squirrel I, and it was brown? Yeah. I love I to hear that. Come on, then. You can draw squirrel. it in a minute. Come on, let's and have I a look at some more flowers. Him. That amount of language coming from this boy is squirrel, and he's repeating after people. It's great. Focusing on assessment, both formal and informal, Bonner Primary School believes has played a significant part in raising attainment for individual children.